Hey guys, how's it going? Got another video today. Gonna be replacing out this boiler feed valve here. I noticed on my last video when I showed you how to purge air out of the system that uh, this thing was leaking a little bit. I didn't get into it in that video because I don't want to get off topic, but I am going to change that today. Have to drain the boiler down, so while I do that, I'm also going to replace the expansion tank. Now, that thing is still technically good, but it's a good time to do it. The feed valve and the expansion tank work hand in hand. They're both matched in pressure. And like I said, it's better off just to do it. That thing up there is 20 years old. I'm surprised it's actually still good. So rather than wait for it to fail, I figured I'd beat it to the, the punch and just take care of it today. So new EX30 expansion tank. And I also have the same exact feed valve that I have here. So we don't have to change any of the piping around. So should be pretty straightforward. Let me get started. All right, so let's shut this guy off. So the way this is set up, it's not really set up right, but got to work with what we got here. The expansion tank is actually piped off of the first floor loop. So I'm going to have to drain that down too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate the basement loop so we don't have to drain that and I'm also going to shut off the second floor and hopefully we'll be able to hold the water in both those zones and not have to purge them all right and I'm going to keep the first floor on so when I open up the the boiler drain down there which is that valve should drain the first floor too if it doesn't I'll have to drain it from here but these uh, flow check valves which of these things right here should hold the water back from back feed into the boiler okay all right so I got that hooked up I'm gonna shut the water going off to the feed valve there's a valve here on top of the water heater that does that. Pipes off up there. We'll open this guy up. So I did a little pre plan in here for when we start taking this thing apart that valve down there I've been in this house now over 10 years I have never opened that valve so I'm anticipating it's probably gonna drip when I shut it off so I picked up a brass cap just in case so we can cap that guy off we don't have to worry about a leak and also up here when we go ahead and get this thing off see how this is set up it's actually a union on here so we can bust the union loose and then we just have to back the valve off of this fitting over here. This looks a little crusty. I'm thinking that this is probably going to be fused into the uh, the valve. So I have a I have another nipple I can use for that. Just trying to anticipate all the problems we might have, so not to run out to the store in the middle of this. I want to get this done as quick as possible. Yeah, so let that drain out for a little bit. Start our repairs when it's done. All right, we're going to change out the expansion tank first. I like to prep the new one before I take the old one off. That way, if there's any water in there, we can thread the new one on real quick. So, I like using this stuff here. This mega lock works pretty good. So, I'm just going to go ahead and sew on the fitting here. Ready to rock and roll. I'll go up there see so if we can get that old one off. I think it's been on there 20 years, so it's probably going to be stuck a little bit, but we'll get it. Like I said, I don't think that one's bad. So it uh, shouldn't be that heavy, but you got to be ready just in case. You got to get underneath that thing so it doesn't drop. Let's see if we can get this thing off. Ah, oh, there it goes. There it goes. 
was on there tight. I said 20 years. I don't think it's too bad. I'm actually going to put a bucket under here just in case. I don't know what's coming out of that thing. You never know. I'm going to be prepared. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. see it coming out. Hopefully it's not much. Not good actually. This was definitely good. There wasn't anything wrong with it. But except 20 years later, it doesn't hurt to change it. Put this guy on here. put these new ones on you don't need to use a wrench you have enough leverage by just turning this thing you don't have to go too nuts with it all right so let's get this feed valve off of here now so like I said we have a union on here that we could break loose and I don't think my adjustable is big enough to get on there so it's all right we'll use my pipe wrench for this this thing off. There it goes. It's good. Let's get a bucket under here just in case. Be careful when you take this thing off because sometimes this pipe, depending where it goes in your house or wherever you're working, isn't supported too well so you don't want to break any of the fittings wherever this thing's going. I think we're going to be okay here. It's not really that big of a leg. Now, let's see if we can get this thing off. Ah, there it goes. Yep, see what's happening? The, that nipple's coming out. I kind of figured that. That's okay. Let's put a new one on. Got to anticipate what could possibly happen because that would suck right now if you had, couldn't get this thing out of here and you had to run out and get one. Especially if you don't have a truck with a bunch of stuff in it or a good supply in your house. I usually keep a box with all this stuff, but if I'm out at the store buying stuff, I'll just buy extra and just keep it in a, a toolbox or I just had a bucket in my house there, so I'm ready to rock and roll if need be. Put some pipe dope on this thing, get it all ready to go. Yeah, so like I said, I noticed that this thing was kind of leaking and hanging up when I shot my last video on the uh, on purging air out of the system. And uh, I was going to mention it in that video, but... I figured I'd just leave it as is, or I wouldn't bring it up, just not to get off topic. Because that was just to show you how to get air out of the system. This is an entirely different animal. You shouldn't have to do this when you bleed air. So here is the new feed valve. All right, this is a Taiko 329-T3. The old one I had was a 329 dash three. Now the difference between the three and the T3 is just that the union on the on this one the T3 is threaded. You see that? The the three without the T, so the 329-3 has a sweat union. But in our case here I'm going to be reusing the old union. So this thing we're not even going to use. But that's the main difference. The valve itself is identical. So if you're looking to buy this thing and all you can find is the T3s and you need a, just a straight 3 they're both the same as long as you're not going to be changing this thing like I said actually on mine here this union is threaded I just noticed that so we're not going to change that we don't have to so I'm going to go ahead and put some pipe dope on this guy I 
I like putting a liberal amount on when I'm doing this because I don't want any leaks. Not any fun when you have to take the thing apart. These come preset out of the box for 12 PSI, which is what I'm going to keep this at. There is a chart somewhere online that you can um, see what you have to set this at depending on how many you know feet of rise you have in your building to your highest baseboard. So, so basically the way that works is you measure the distance from the feed valve to your highest point on your system and then it gives you a formula to figure out what pressure you have to set this thing at. I'm in a two-story house and a two-story residential house usually 12 psi is fine for these things you don't have to mess with it. So in general or usually all the time the feed valve matches the pressure of the expansion tank. So the expansion tank comes from the factory set at 12 psi and like I said the feed valve comes at 12 psi so we don't have to change anything. If you change this you should really change the expansion tank pressure. There's a a Schrader valve on the bottom of that thing that you basically put like a bicycle pump on and you can pump air into it or let air out whatever you want to do but I don't recommend doing that unless you have to like I said if you're in a normal residential house you shouldn't have to change anything with that you should be good to go alright I think we're good there doesn't leak. There is, let me see here where that went. The union on the new one comes with a new gasket. We're going to put that on the old one. I don't see where the old one is here. This guy never put it on when he put this together. It's really weird. I don't see it on there, but we'll put it on unless it fell somewhere. I don't know. We'll put that guy on there. And we'll hook this back up. Actually, some guys might not like this, but I do it. When I'm putting a union on, I put pipe dope on this too. It doesn't hurt anything. If anything, it lubes up the fitting so it goes together a little bit easier. Alright, I'll put this guy on. thing on okay look better take this guy up now word of caution with these brass nuts don't go too crazy cranking these things down because you can crack and split this thing and sometimes it's very difficult to tell and it won't leak right away until maybe after you're done and that's the last thing you ever want is to develop a leak. You know, after you leave the area and then you find out it's too late. So, yeah, you can see this thing here. This thing wasn't really hard to move around. Like I said, I noticed this when I did the purge the other day. So, this thing's like 40 or 50 bucks. You can get one. Alright guys, so that's looking good. Can start filling this system now. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I right, move the hose up to the purge station for the first floor loop. Again, that's the one we drained so we can put the new expansion tank in. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this valve now. That'll stop water from just traveling right back through the boiler in a loop and it'll force it out this purge station now so we can get all the air out. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn on the the water up here. This guy should start filling now. Okay, you can see that the the water initially was rushing in there, and now it's the uh, feed valve is starting to see a little bit of resistance and a pressure increase, so it's going to drop down the amount of water that it's allowing into the system. So it's good. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up this valve. See here, we're getting some water flow through this now. A lot of air, obviously, because we had that thing drained down completely. It 
So we're just going to have to let this run for a bit until we get a nice steady stream of water coming out. I'll come back and see where we're at. If you guys watched my purge video where I showed you how to remove air from the system, showed you my trick, I put the hose in a bucket like this. It's not really, really, it's not really my trick, a lot of guys do this, but I could show you a little bit here because obviously we have a lot more air in the system now that we had it open than I was showing you in the previous video, but really get an idea how much air you're getting out of the system by having it in a bucket like this. Look at all the bubbles coming up in here. And sometimes, like I said, that's difficult to see. It's just coming out of the, the hose when you have it like this. So I recommend you do it like this when you get towards the tail end and you'll know when you're done. So the way this feed valve works is right now we have the normal operating position where it's putting 12 psi in. If we want to do a fast fill, we take this lever and we've got to push it down a little bit to get it past that notch and we push it all the way over. And now you're introducing full city pressure into the system. I recommend you do that for a little bit. It helps push all the air out. Just got to make sure you put that lever back before you close this valve off. And again, I demonstrated that in my video where I showed you how to purge air out of your heating system. I'll put a link down in the description and on the screen if you guys want to check that out if you haven't seen it already. Hear those little noises right now? That's all air coming out still. And we got some more bubbles. That means we still have to keep going. All right, guys. What I went ahead and did was is I purged air out of the other two zones, the basement zone and the second floor also. Because I noticed after the fact here that when we went ahead and opened up the boiler drain down there, Again, we had these valves off for each of the zones. But when we opened up that drain, it drained out water out of these legs of pipe here too, right above the circulator pumps. So, um, we ended up with air in each of those zones, but just a little bit. And when I opened these valves up, obviously it started circulating through the, the pipes. So, didn't take long, took like a minute or two. And now all three zones are free of air. Right, so the boiler's been running a little bit now. You can see our pressure's eh, right around 20, maybe a little less. That's normal when the water heats up. When it cools down, it drops down to 12. Just kept an eye on everything. Looks like uh, we're pretty good. No leaks. Well, our fittings here are nice and dry. None of the packing nuts are leaking on the valves, which is good. This valve down here is holding, which was a surprise for sure that thing would start leaking after we opened it up but it's holding expansion tank looks good no leaks went ahead and dated it so the next guy knows when it was installed all right guys well, that pretty much wraps it up hope you liked the video if you did give the like button a tap got any questions post them down in the comment section check the description I'm gonna put links to all the products I used in this video you can order them from there get shipped right to your house Save you a trip to the store. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.